Hello, this is Mrs. Clark, and welcome to my video on calculating the distance between two points. We're going to be looking at two ways of doing this. One is called the distance formula, the other is Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to be doing both of those methods today in this foldable. I'm going to flip the camera real quick to show you how to cut this out. All right, so you have this paper. What you're going to do is grab your scissors, and you're going to cut off this corner and this corner so these little rectangles are marked there just to show you where to cut so if i show you an example of the first one you're just going to cut off the corner just like this so if you look at it, it was like this and then you just cut it off so you're going to do that on both sides and then come back and i'll show you how to fold it all right so your paper should look like this what we're going to do is i'm going to have you turn it around so that you're looking at this side of it and then you're going to fold these two pieces back and what you're looking for is to make two doors so usually what i do is i fold it so that it's in line at the top i'll show you here in just a second i fold it so that it's in line at the top up here um, and then it makes a nice crease along this side and i'm gonna do the same thing on this side they do overlap a little bit So you have these two little doors that are overlapping a little bit. So one side is going to be where we do our Pythagorean theorem work, and this side is going to be where we do our distance formula work. So I'm going to make this video into two parts. Um, for now, we're just going to glue this in, and we'll get started on the first half. Fold that bottom part up so it covers over like this. And then I'm going to show you how to glue it onto your notebook page. So you should have this graph paper. <coughs> an A and a B on it, make sure it's right side up when you glue it on your page. That's going to go towards the top, and then this blue page is going to go towards the bottom. So you're going to glue it on this back end. And then stick it right here. So the bottom half of the page is used for the blue piece. The top half has the graph on it. All right. After you have that done, Let's go ahead and connect A to B and make a line segment. Because we're going to be looking at calculating the distance from A to B. So we're going to learn two different methods to do that. Both of them get us the same answer. Sometimes you, one will make more sense than other, the other, depending on what kind of problem you're looking at. Um, but we're going to be looking at both the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula. So in order to do the Pythagorean theorem, we have to look at this as part of a triangle. So I'm going to actually draw a triangle underneath it like we normally do when we do slope. We're not calculating slope, but it does look very similar to slope. So I'm going to calculate this vertical distance when I drop A down, and then when I go to the right to hit B, how far is that? So both having both of those distances is going to help me calculate the distance of this diagonal piece because I can't count boxes along the diagonal the way I can count them when they're vertical or they're horizontal. So if I count this one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units long. So this side is eight. If I count the bottom, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve units long. I'm going to use those two lengths and the Pythagorean theorem to help me calculate the length of this side. That's what I'm looking for. My ultimate goal is to know how long is it from A to B. What is the length of this diagonal line segment? So in our blue thing, we're going to fold this open. open. We're going to only be working under this side right now. I'm going to do a part two for the other side, but for right now, we're just going to be working under this side. So this is our Pythagorean theorem work. I'm going to title it here, just so that when it's open, we know what we're looking at. If you want to see the words a little more clearly, just it's the same spelling that's on the front. Pythagorean theorem. So in order to use the Pythagorean theorem, we need a right triangle. This example up here is a right triangle. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. 
A right triangle has one right angle in it. So this is our right angle because that's the sides that are vertical and horizontal are meeting on the graph and those meet at perpendicular lines. Um, all the vertical lines and horizontal lines on a graph are perpendicular, so they're all making right angles. So when I'm looking at a right triangle, this side that is across from the right angle, we call that the hypotenuse. So hypo, then 10, then use. That's how you break that word apart, hypotenuse. Sometimes we just abbreviate that hip. Then the other two sides, this vertical side, this horizontal side, now this is right side up, but sometimes your triangle might be spun around. We call these legs. So this is a leg and this is a leg. And I like to think of it as a leg, a leg, and a hip. The hips connect our legs, so that kind of makes sense. Now you may have seen a Pythagorean theorem written like this before. You may have learned it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That gets a little bit confusing because you have to know which side is a, which side is b, which side is c. The way that it's set up is the legs are a and b, so it doesn't matter whether I call this one a or I call this one a, but for now I'm just going to label one a and one b. The hypotenuse is always c. If you like to use this one, you absolutely can. I get that. I think it's a little bit confusing because unless I put c in my hypotenuse spot, then I have it all wrong. So you need to make sure you're putting them in the right places. It doesn't matter which leg goes in the A, which leg goes in the B. I like to look at it this way because it uses the vocabulary. Leg squared plus leg squared because it doesn't matter. So why give them two different letters, right? One of the leg squared plus the other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And I abbreviate that hip, H-Y-P. So this is the Pythagorean theorem that's going to allow me to find the length of one of these sides if I know the other two. So if we look at our triangle that we created at the top, I'm going to redraw that down here. So we are trying to find out from A to B the length of that side, which is actually ends up being our hypotenuse. That's what we're looking for. We have the bottom leg was 12, and the leg over here was 8. We counted them right here on the graph. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can set up an equation that will help us figure out this side, because I know these two sides. I just need to know two of them, and I can find the third one. So if I start with my formula, leg squared plus leg squared equals hip squared. And I fill in the pieces that I know. One of my legs is 8, so 8 squared, plus the other leg is 12, so 12 squared, equals hip squared. I'm going to keep hip here because I don't know that number, and I'm going to solve for that. So I'm going to break this down one piece at a time. I need to know what squared means. So squared means I'm multiplying it by itself. So if I grab my calculator, I'm going to do 8 times itself which means I'm going to do 8 times 8, and I get 64. So now instead of 8 squared, I'm going to write 64. Plus 12 squared, which is 12 times 12, so 12 times 12, which is 144, equals hip squared. So 64 plus 144 is 208. So together, this makes 208. And that's equal to hip squared. I don't want hip squared. I want to know the length of hip. But this is the relationship that I have. So I need to get rid of this squared. In order to get rid of a squared, we have a special function called a square root. So if I square root both sides of my equation, this is what's going to happen. The 208 is going to get square rooted. I'm going to use my calculator to do that. On this side, because I took a square root, this square root is going to cancel out with this exponent of a 2, and I'm going to have just hip. So I'm going to just have a hip on this side. I now undid the squared by taking the square root of it. And it's going to be approximately equal to whatever the square root of 208 is. I can't calculate the square root of 208. It's not something that we learn how to calculate. It's something that we need a calculator for because 
it has an algorithm in it that will do it for us. Some number times itself gives us 208. Unless it's a number like 64, 49, 100, it's not one that I know. It might not even be a whole number. So I can't just calculate it. I need a calculator for it. So the way we get to that on the calculator is if you'll notice down here, there is a square root button. It's blue. Do you see it right there? The little blue square root. So I have to hit the blue button, so second. Then I have to hit this x squared button. And then look, I'll get a square root on my calculator. Then I'm going to type in 208. And I'm going to hit enter. And the calculator is going to do that work for me. So the square root of 208 is 14.4222051. I'm going to follow the same rounding rules we were doing at the beginning of the year. And we're going to do two decimal places. So it's 14.42. And because the next number is a 2, it's going to stay 4 or 2 instead of rounding up. So my hip is approximately 14.42 units. I never would have been able to calculate that or count it, have that to know that it was 14.42 boxes of counting them on the graph. So I had to use a formula to calculate it. I can't approximate 0.42 of a box. I can't even do this square root in my head. So you should add a note on here that this symbol here is called a square root. So square root is this little check mark sort of division looking thing. It undoes the square and what a square is, is this exponent here of 2. We call that a square. You might want to even write in here what that means. It means 8 times 8. So that you don't accidentally think that it's 8 times 2. So it's not times 2, it's times itself. It tells you the number of, number of 8s that are being multiplied. So we have a square root, which undoes a square. These are inverse operations. All right, so that is it for part one with Pythagorean theorem. Please watch the other video, part two, to see the distance formula. Thanks for watching.